Hi everyone and welcome back to Waterhouse Ford. Uh, something a little bit different for this video. Uh, obviously we normally work on the Fergie. That's the, the main uh, subject or, or topic of this channel. But um, I have done a few videos in the past on this ride on mower. Um, and they seem to be very popular. People seem to get, get something out of them. So um, now that was about two years ago, we went through the whole cutting deck, we, we refurbished it completely, uh, we did an annual service on the engine, um, I think we fixed some steering, stuff, just general things that needed tidying up at the time. Um, most of that, well certainly the engine uh, 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 service is due again, it's now been two years, normally I try to do them annually but actually it normally works out about every two years, so th that's due. That's not. We're not going to cover that in this video, but just to let you know that that is coming. That'll be a future video. Um, so yeah, engine service needs doing. Um, we the blades need sharpening and probably rebalancing. So again, that'll be another video. Um, and I actually do want to reset the deck heart. I think that that when I did it last time, I was struggling with the uneven surface, and I don't think I got it entirely right. So. I would actually like to redo that. Um, the uh, a couple of other things just need adjusting, like the um, the gear selector. I think that, that there's, there's an adjuster on there. I think that needs resetting. Same for the handbrake. Um, and then, but the the thing that that really needs doing, and the thing we're going to do today, is to is to replace the brake pads on on this mower. The uh, the brake pads are now completely worn out to the point that it's actually difficult to stop. Um, if you're not on a flat surface, it doesn't stop, which is, which is obviously dangerous. So, um, I don't think it's going to be a long video. It shouldn't be, but again, you know, you never know what you're going to find until you get in there. Uh, it's a little bit fiddly and it is a little awkward to film. So, I'm hoping that you guys are going to be able to see what I'm doing. I will obviously try and describe what I'm doing if I'm not able to film it. So, um, I hope that this will help. And I hope uh, if you if you need to do this job that you'll get some tips uh, along along the way. But um, yeah, so let's jump into it. Um, normally I try and raise the, the mower, try and get it up a bit, but I think I'm going to have a go at trying to do it on the ground. Um, obviously I need, do need to jack it up a little bit to get the wheel off, but um, I'm going to try and do it on the ground. Hopefully um, that will be hopefully that'll work because trying to lift it is uh, and get it set safely. Uh, at a heart is, is um, it's a fair amount of work, so we're going to try it with that. Anyway, enough of that. Right, let's get going. Okay, first thing I've done is to chop the, uh, the wheels on this side. That is on 
the right hand side when you stand when you're sitting on the mower um, because the brakes are on the left hand side here so we need to raise this left hand side a bit I'm hoping this jack is going to get under here I think it does yeah okay we just get that on the uh, on the axle Okay, I hope you can see it in there now. Uh, you may not be able to see the detail, but it's um, one of these half or three quarter circlips. There you go. So that's what we're talking about. Um, it's a real simple washer, and then the wheel just slides off like that. And there's another washer behind it. There you go. Okay, now let me get my let me get you guys better situated here. Okay, hopefully you can um, orient yourself. So this is uh, this is obviously the back of the mower. Here's the axle uh, sitting here. So this is the brake set up in here. Um, now let me move the light, there you go, so you can see you've got this um, you've got the spinning disc that sits on the, it's actually on a slave shaft it's not on the main axle but it's on a slave shaft and then you've got this lever which um, so I can't get to the brake pedal now but when when you pull the brake lever this this lever I can't remember if it goes backwards or forwards, I think it goes backwards and it it, it drives a cam inside this assembly here and that cam pushes the brake pads up against that. Well, it pushes the outer brake pad up against that disc, and you've got another brake pad sitting behind the disc, and between the two of them, they then act as your as your friction surface, uh, or as your well, they are the friction um, material which ultimately uh, wears out. Anyway. Um, a lot of grass in here, there always is, no matter how much you try and clean them, how much you try and get in there. You saw me spraying earlier with the wheel on, it's impossible to get in there. But look, it doesn't do it any harm. Any grass that gets onto that disc just gets burnt away or thrown away, whichever happens first. And it's no issue. But, right, so, um, I need to get some spanners and stuff and get set up, but essentially what we want to do is um, we're going to remove this is an adjuster here this nut in the middle to be honest with you there's not a lot of adjustment to be had but that that is a, allegedly an, an adjuster and then you've got these two uh, bolts here which um, allow you to remove that that assembly and i cannot remember if we need to take the top of the lever off i don't think we do but there is actually an adjustment somewhere in here as well um, I just need to go and read the manual and um, work out exactly how that works and then we may have a go at adjusting that once we've got the new pads in as well but um, essentially that's the job let me get set up and I will come back okay um, I went and read the manual and um, actually we need we needed to take this back so we're at the back of the mower now this is the, this is the rear that's the wheel that we haven't taken off and this is the, the wheel, just to orient yourself, right? Um, so, look, it's real, it's real easy, you take the back, if you've got a tow bar, you need to take the tow bar off first. And then there's um, two bolts, one up here, one up here, one there, one there, and that back panel comes out. You have to kind of scoop it out this way. But the reason that we needed to take that off is, if I can... now. 
I'm not going to be able to film this, so I'm just going to explain it and then I will do it. But you'll see. Let me. Um, okay, hopefully you can see this now, but. This is the, um, the brake lever, right, so this is the bit that goes down to the brake pads that we were looking at a minute ago, and you'll see there's a, you've got your brake bar coming in, and that connects at the top here with a, a kind of a circular kind of clip. Um, so basically you just pop that off, pull this out, and then you take the, the brakes off. Um, and that's so that the lever comes out as one, one unit, so that you don't have to remove that center nut that I showed you on the other side. And they say not to, uh, not to mess with that because that is, as I said earlier, is the adjustment. And it basically takes up the slack um, before, so it's basically any slack in the linkage uh, before the brakes actually activate. Um, now, once we've got the new pa brake pads in, we'll, we'll check that and make sure that it's, there's not too much slack. And if needs be, we'll, we'll tighten that up. But essentially, that's what that central, central bolt is for. Anyway, I'm going to do this quickly. I'm going to, as I said, I'm not going to film it because I really don't think you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, and then we'll go back around to the other side and uh, and get the brakes off. Okay, so we got that loose. You can see there's the shaft has come off. Um, so that lever is now loose. So what we can do now is remove these two nuts on the side. Sorry, bolts. That's that one. Oh, that's tight. Damn. Not sure that needed to be that tight, but anyway. Oh, there's one of our brake pads falling out. Actually, that one doesn't look that worn. Okay, there you go. Right, so this is what the, um, the brake holder looks like. And uh, as I said, one of the brake pads fell out. That goes in there. And there's a metal plate at the back. Um, that is, it, that's really important, that kind of spreads the load, but you can see that fits in there. Now we'll measure that up in a second. Um, so the minimum thickness of the pad, I need to double check, it was either 4 millimeters or 5, I think it was 5. I guess that that one's, yeah it's probably there or thereabouts actually looking at it. Um, so that's that, and as you can see, if I um, Move the lever, you, hopefully you can see it in the camera. Let me just get this angled right. So I hold this still, and as I move that lever, those pins are pushed forward, and that's basically how the brake works. Um, you probably can't see it on the camera, but okay, now this disc just slides off. Okay. And we'll have a look, we'll clean that up and have a look at that in a minute. But um, the other pad is back in the frame here. So again, hopefully you can see this. Um, there it is there. Yeah, and you see that one's a lot thinner. Um, so that one's definitely the one that's giving us the problem. And if I'm not mistaken, no, there's nothing. I thought there was another plate behind it, but there isn't. All right, very good. So there you go. Now, obviously, we want to get all this cleaned up and um, cleaned out. Not that it's going to stay clean for very long, but can't help myself. Um, so we'll get all that cleaned up. We'll then do some measurements and um, check against the new pads. We'll probably put the new pads in anyway. 
But um, look, that's about, well, certainly that's, that's what's involved in taking it apart. Let's just clean that disc up and um, just make sure that we don't see any issues with that. I'm not expecting to. Okay, there we go. So, you can see that that surface is absolutely fine. There's no obvious signs of cracking or um, scarring. There's a little bit of scoring where the brake pad's been running, but again, that would be reasonably normal. This side, um, again, no obvious signs of cracking. Um, there's a little bit of, it looks like the pad was stuck there for a bit. That's probably where it was parked up over the winter. Uh, you can see the, the outline of the pad there. And in fact, you can see a couple of them. So yeah, again, you know, obviously that's the problem with mowers, right? They they work their backsides off in the summer and then they sit idle all the way through the majority of, well certainly all of winter, uh, some of autumn and um, maybe the beginning of spring as well. So, you know, at least six months of the year they, they stay standing idle and, and that, that, that can cause that. But um, yeah, so look, I'm not seeing any obvious issues uh, other than it, uh, it you know, certainly looks like we've got worn brake pads. Um, I'm going to clean those up just a little bit and then we'll go up on the workbench, we'll measure them, we'll compare them to the, um, to the new ones and, um, and, then, and, cle and t clean things up and then we'll, we'll start reassembly. Okay, so I've given things a little bit of a clean, not, nothing dramatic, but um, what I wanted to do is quickly measure this. So this is the rear pad. And that's actually coming up as six millimeters. And the front one is coming up at seven. Now the new ones, and I checked the, uh, the minimum spec is five. So both of them are actually still within spec. So yeah, you see <coughs> the new ones are only seven as well. So in actual fact, that one, that front one, is absolutely fine, and the rear one is only just under. So, so the truth is that this thing does not need new brake pads. Um, I mean, in theory, you could replace the back one. That you know, it's almost almost worn, but um, but it still has another millimeter of wear to go. So, why did we not have any brakes? Of well, good enough brakes, if you see what I mean. Now, one thing I had noted when I was cleaning this back one is that it was, seemed to be covered in quite a bit of oil and or grease. And in fact, even now on the surface, it still feels greasy. And I've not sprayed it with any cleaner yet, so just just for clarity. But you know, just roughing up that braking surface. And I think that that is going to come clean. So I think that we've managed to get some grease or something onto the disc or onto the pads, and that's what was causing it the the the, the, the pad the uh, brake sorry to to not work as well as they should. The other thing I've noted is that this this movement. So as they're sitting in the in the mower, like that, this lever goes this way, and look, it's okay. It's not bad. But, yeah, actually it is fine. It's when you go back the other way, which of course you wouldn't normally do. That's where it feels a bit crunchy. But, yeah, actually that does feel fine. I was going to say let's, um, let's dismantle this thing and, and tidy it up. But actually it feels fine. What I will do is just take these two pins out. And... Um, just tidy those up a little bit. There's a little bit of a ridge on that one. That one feels okay, but it um, it won't hurt. Just to give it a bit of a tidy up. So I think I'm going to tidy those up. I'll make sure there's nothing in those holes, and um, and then I think we'll reassemble. Okay. In the end, I decided to dismantle this anyway, uh, just mostly to get it clean. But also, what I decided to do was to polish this surface here. Because these two little pins basically are activated by sliding up and down that 
raised um, you know up and down the V essentially so I thought well that needs to be super slick uh, and similarly on the back side this washer you know turns against that washer and um, so I've kind of polished the washer and I've also polished this face here I didn't bother about cleaning the rest of it it's you know, obviously going to rust anyway uh, given where it is in the, in the mower so so that's done <coughs> excuse me I um, I polished these two little pins and I also just cleaned out the two holes that they go in it's a number eight drill size if you if you've got the same one just put pop a drill in there twist it and that'll just clean out those holes sprayed with a bit of compressed air and you're done the uh, the brake pads I soaked them in brake cleaner and they've come up nice and clean I've also just uh, flattened them with a piece of sandpaper um, and given them a bit of a surface um, the disc as I said no concerns with the disc again I've checked it out can't see any particular issues with it and um, you know that that looks absolutely fine so really just given that a, a bit of a wipe to clean it but nothing much more than that the spring I mean it it looks a bit rusted but it still feels nice and strong so I'm not not too concerned about that so we'll go ahead and start reassembling now the um, the way this works is the the spring goes on essentially upside down or what seems like upside down so you'll see that the spring has a, a small diameter and a large diameter the small diameter goes down and you'll see that that then actually sits inside a little recess in this housing so um, so that that's the easiest way to 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 um, to think about that then we've got the lever now I just need to make sure yeah that's the this is so if you get confused looking at this carrier it's quite easy to determine the top has a has a um, sort of a scallop I suppose scalp taken out of it there so it's round essentially and also look at these you've got an angle on those so you know that this this is the top and basically the disc sits inside there so we know that the lever needs to go toward the top as well so that goes on there like that then we take the washer we'll put the polished part down but now this is where I do want to put some grease um, because again this is a um, you know the, the, this is a part where you've got parts moving against each other and they are metal parts so I'm going to put a bit of grease on this surface here and I'm using copper grease which um, number one tends to be more water resistant but also is uh, essentially heat resistant and then I think what I'll do is I'll just put some on here might put a little bit more on there because it's not going to hurt now generally speaking you want to keep grease away from brake parts um, but unfortunately brakes do have moving parts and so a bit of grease is is required uh, from time to time but anyway right so we'll pop that back on again we'll put the polished side of the uh, washer down we then have this lock I don't really know it's some sort of plate I guess it's a lock plate maybe but that goes there and then you've got this um, nylon or nylock nut that goes on there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a, a bolt through there to hold that in place. And with this nut, I'm going to just take it so that it's locked, as in the nylock action has started. And not much more. Alright, so just like that. Take that back out again. Right, now the next job would be to put our two pins in, but again, we really do want those to to move freely in there. Now, I'm going to put some grease on there, but I'm not going to slather it on. I'm basically going to make it as thin as I possibly can. 
on the long face of the pin. And almost wipe it off again, if that makes sense. So that it's really just a a coating rather than um, too much. Anyway, pop that in. We'll do the next one. that in there. Right, now I'll just tidy my hands up, get rid of the grease, we don't want any grease on anything else. Okay, now look that's pretty much it, obviously this plate then goes down over those pins and they help, that helps just to um, equalize them. Um, now I think what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to put I'm going to swap the pads around. So previously, the one at the back was the um, the most worn. I'm going to put that one in here, and I'm going to put the slightly larger one behind the disc. Mostly, just to mix things up and make sure that we're not um, running, you know, groove. So basically, to so that we well, actually, I flattened the pads anyway, so that doesn't really matter. But main thing is, I want this to. Um, yeah, see that sits in there like that, but, um, well, just to mix it up basically. Right, um, so now we're going to go back over to the, to the mower and we're going to fit the brake pad, fit the disc and then fit this back in as well. And then we will adjust that play on the lever. Um, there's also, again, I need to just read up, but on the actual shaft that comes from the, from the pedal all the way through to the back of the tractor, there is also an adjuster there and there is a measurement uh, for that. I'll read that, I'll read up on that and um, we, we will do that as well to make sure that everything is top notch and hopefully then our brakes will actually work. All right, move over to the tractor, so uh, I'll, I'll be back. Okay, so as you can see we've cleaned this up a little bit. Now, there is one thing I'm worried about. Like I said, this pad that was at the back did seem to have a bit of grease or oil on it. I'm actually worried about this oil seal here. Um, there seemed to be a lot of oil around this area. And I'm now beginning to wonder whether we've got a slight weep from the gearbox. But we're going to go for it. Um, I'm certain that we don't have any oil or grease on anything here at the moment in this vicinity. So we're going to put it all back together. We're going to run the mower for a week or three and then we'll come back and uh, when we're doing this engine service we'll, uh, we'll check this out and see whether that pad has now picked up some more oil or not. And if it has then we know we've got a problem around that oil seal. Now that's obviously a major job. That means dropping the whole transmission uh, dismantling it and, um, and and redoing that seal. I don't believe you can pu pull it out without splitting. This basic this unit splits here along this line here, so I'm pretty certain you'd have to do that in order to get it to get it out. But um, anyways, right. Um, so look, the pad basically just sits in the back there, just like that. <laughs> Except it doesn't want to stay. Oh, all right. Let me get a bit closer. I do want to try and get rid of this lever, just get it out of the way. Try and hook it onto something. No, it doesn't want to go anywhere. Yeah, okay, it's going to be awkward. Right, this is going to be interesting. So we've got to hold that in there and uh, get the disc on. 
So again, the disc, the boss of the disc faces outward, faces forward. That uh, runs inside the, um, or just on top of the brake carrier. There we go. Okay, so that's in now. So that was easy enough. Right, then we bring our uh, brake assembly in. Get the bolts in. Get ready. And um, that wants to go. Now this is where it gets tricky because it's got to go. There we go. Okay, that first one is in. Get the second one in. Just spin those in. Okay, so those are in, they're not tight, but they're in. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go around and just reconnect this um, lever before we go any further. And, um, excuse me. <coughs> and then, um, and then we'll tighten this up and we'll, we'll maybe start tightening or tensioning up or taking up any slack here. Okay, I've got that lever back on and, um, and now, one thing to note when you are doing that, remember that the, the bar that runs from the front of the tractor to the back, it goes in the top hole of the lever. There's actually two holes that it could go into. It is the top one. Um, number one, I made note of that when I took it off, and number two, I did check in the manual as well. So, it's definitely the top one. Um, yeah, so we can tighten these up now. And again, we don't need to go mental with them. They just need to be firm. Um, I seem to have overdone them last time, so be a little bit more cautious this time. Right, now the other thing I checked in the manual is um, the there is an adjustment in the bar that runs from the front of the tractor to the back. However, that is predominantly for adjusting how the handbrake, right, so basically making sure that the handbrake engages the, when it's engaged, that it holds the, it puts enough pressure on the brakes to hold the, hold the mower. Um, so we're not going to do that right now. We, the only way of adjusting basically the slack in the brake is through this nut here, the central nut um, that we talked about earlier. So um, one thing to note is that I can turn the disc with by hand here, right, very easily. There's no, no resistance on it. And this uh, lever is really loose, right? So there is currently little to no tension on those brake pads. There's nothing actually holding them up against the disc. So if we were to engage the brake pedal now, there's not going to be enough relative movement in the whole system to actually engage the brake. And this may be what the issue was combined with that um, oil or grease on the pads. So what we're going to do is we're going to tighten this up until I feel tension and what I mean by tension predominantly it's around the free movement of this lever and also whether or not I can turn this disc and um, there I can feel it starting to engage now the lever is starting to firm up and that is now quite firm and in fact that disc is definitely starting to get more difficult to turn and it's pretty much locked there. Right, so that disc is now locked by the brakes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come, um, so if you notice my spanner is uh, sort of pointing almost all the way straight down. I'm going to come back essentially a quarter turn, so 90 degrees, and yeah, 
see I can now turn that disc again still a little bit okay that's it seems to get tight and then loose I wonder if we've got a maybe a half spot on this disc but um, anyway so I think I think I'm going to so where was I was there actually I think I'm gonna leave it there I think I'm gonna leave it there I think that that is loose enough um, we'll just check again so if I go back to there yeah, the disc is definitely not able to turn by hand. Go back to three o'clock and yeah, let's go with that. That the edges of that disc are quite sharp. Maybe I should have um I probably should have just deburred those, but anyway, it is what it is now. Right, so look I think that that's fine. The um the foot pedal is on the other side of the mower at the moment. Uh, difficult for me working on my own to um, to engage it like this. So rather than try and test it here like this, what I'm going to do, it's real quick and easy to put the wheel on. I'm going to put the wheel on. I'm going to. I'm not going to close up the back there for now. I'm going to leave that open. Um, I'm going to then take it out, do a bit of a test, see how I feel with the brakes. And I can always adjust this nut from, you know, from the back of the tractor, even when the wheel is on. There's nothing the not the tractor, the mower. Sorry, uh, even when the wheel is on, I can I can get to it. So I can adjust it, um, fine tune it basically uh, once it's once it's back on its back on its wheels. Um, so let's get the wheel back on. Um, we'll move the camera. Okay, right, I've got the wheel here, right now there's a washer, that a big washer that goes on behind the wheel, and of course there's one that goes on the front as well, but basically pop that on the shaft, right now this shaft is, has a keyway in it and the wheel has a key in the, um, in the rim. And so you just turn it until they engage and uh, that then goes on. We get the uh, other washer on and then the clip. Now the clip, I need a good pair of pliers. Let's try these. is in and that's basically it. I'm not going to put the dust cap on um, I will do that once I'm happy that everything is fine. Right so I'm going to stop the video there I'm going to go out I'm going to do a little test and then I'll come back and uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what we found. Okay well road test done, garden test, driveway test all fine. Uh, no. So look, I did have to adjust the brakes back, right? So I had to, I had to uh, reduce the play on that uh, on that lever quite a bit, actually. Um, in the end, it, I, I tried to measure it as I was doing it. it. I think it was either one turn or one turn and, a, and an eighth. Uh, so in total, right? So adding the quarter turn that we did on the, you know, when, when we had the wheel off, we I went at least another three quarters of a turn, so to comp to make one whole turn back, um, and then a little bit more, about another eighth, um, just to get the final adjustment. So now it breaks, as in it stops uh, without skidding, because initially when I did it, it was just locking the wheels and we were just sliding. Of course, you don't want that on your lawn. Um, you, don't, you don't want to be digging up your lawn uh, with your brakes. Um, but so so I adjusted it back. Uh, so it now stops. It stops well. It stops quickly, but it doesn't uh, lock the back back uh, back wheels. And then uh, on uh, in one section of our driveway, we've got quite a steep 
uh, gravel bit, I was able to put it on there, engage the handbrake, and it held the machine with me sitting on it, no issues whatsoever. So we don't need to adjust that um, the the linkage in the in the in the in, in the the brake shaft that runs from the front to the back. Look, if you do need to adjust it, um, basically. In fact, let me bring the camera over and I'll show you uh, how you do do it. I'm not going to do it because we don't need to, but if you're interested, I'll, I'll quickly show you what you would do. I'll talk you through it uh, in case you're having a problem with your, with your handbrake not holding. So again, just to be very, very clear here, the first task is to get your brakes working properly and efficiently so that you're happy with them. Again, you don't want your wheels locking up. That, that's, uh, that's really bad news. For two reasons: one, you lose control in in a really serious situation, uh, but two, you don't want to be digging up your lawn, right? So you just want your brakes to engage, to slow you, and then to hold the machine, and that's how they're designed to work. Uh, anyway, point being, get your brakes to where you want them, and only then, if your handbrake isn't holding, that's when you would come back and make this adjustment. We don't have that issue, hence we won't actually do it. But let me talk you through it quickly, um, and then we'll finish the video there. Okay, so again, just to orient yourself, this is the, the left-hand foot pedal. Um, obviously, you can see you've got the seat here, etc. So hopefully that, that gives you your orientation. I'm going to just zoom in on this piece here. Right. So this is the bit that, we, um, that we're talking about. Right, so this is where you would make your adjustment so um, I don't know if you can see it let me bring you over a little bit more uh, hopefully you can see that but look there's a nut here on the outside let me get the screwdriver rather than my big finger okay so you've got a lock nut back there and then you've got this nut and then this is the uh, the lever that goes off to the pedal so what you would do, so basically you've got a washer here, a spring, and then a washer, and then a nut. You're going to be measuring between the insides of the washers, the two washers, right? So you loosen that lock nut, and you use this nut to adjust the length of the spring, so the distance from the inside of this washer to the inside of that washer. And for this tractor with the mechanical drive, in other words, not the hydrostatic, um, that measurement needs to be 43 and a half millimeters to 45 millimeters somewhere in that range as you can tell That's not a huge range, right? But um, in fact, let's just measure this one and see where this one is But like I say our handbrake is working absolutely fine, so I'm not going to adjust it There we go so that is, yeah. so actually this one's coming out at 54, which doesn't sound right, does it? Let me just double check my measurements. Yeah, so that was right, 43 and a half to actually 45 and a half uh, is the distance you want between the, the washers. Now this one is coming out at 54, which is quite a bit more. No, sorry, I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. Sorry, not 54. It's uh, 50. Sorry, 40, 5, 6, 7, 8, 48. So it's just a little bit too long. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to mess with it because it's working. Um, anyway, so there you go. Take that uh, however you want. In theory, I should sort it out, but. Um, that would probably mean resetting the brakes as well, which I, I don't want to do at this point. Okay, um, look, I'm going to leave this video there. Um, I think that hopefully that's helped you. Hopefully that's given you some information and shown you. It's a really simple system. You know, those brakes are basically just, uh, you know, those brake pads are just being forced up against the disc. That's it. And it's all mechanical. There's no hydraulics or, or anything special in there. It's really quite simple. I think that the key is to keep them clean. Um, which is really difficult when, <laughs> given their position right right at the back of the of the mower there 
they're going to pick up dirt, they're going to pick up uh, oil, uh, not oil, sorry, water, you know, if you're out in the rain or the grass is a bit wet, you're definitely going to get some, some damp on there. And that's why you can see that that lever is rusting. Um, the good news is that the disc is designed basically to shed dirt and to shed um, moisture, etc. That's why it's open that way, so which basically allows everything to to come off and not get trapped inside there. Um, and it does, look, it does seem to work. Um, I'm actually really happy with the brakes on this now. I wasn't before the before this video started, um, but I am really happy with them now. I've had a good run around the property and uh, they, they seem to be working absolutely fine, exactly as I'd expect them to. In fact, a little bit better, than I think, than they ever have, which is, which is really, really good. But um, anyway, like I say, hopefully that's helped you. Hopefully that's given you some, some guidance or some help, some, uh, just an insight into how, how to um, sort out the brakes on these uh, Manfield tractors, uh, sorry, uh, lawnmowers. Um, uh, probably one word to mention, so this particular model is the 1538M for mother, um, and as I said at the start of the video, it's the side discharge one. I believe it's exactly the same for the um, the one with the, with the collector at the back. Um, and uh, to be honest with you, I think most of the mound fields are very, very similar, if not the same braking system. So I believe that this video will be applicable to pretty much anybody with a mound field. Um, maybe the newer ones have something different. You know, this, this particular mower is now... Sure. Um, I want to say six to eight years old, somewhere around there. Um, so, you know, there are newer models and maybe things have changed. I'm, I'm not certain. But certainly if you've got this sort of era, then, then it should work. Um, and in fact, other brands, you know, I think that this arrangement is reasonably common. Um, and I think other brands <coughs> will, uh, will have used this, uh, this setup as well. But anyway, bottom line is I hope that that's helpful to you. I hope that's given, given you something of value. If nothing else, I hope that you've enjoyed the video and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Hope you all have a good week and uh, yeah, see you on the next video. Cheers for now.